Okay, you're probably about to see the least aesthetic home studio tour on YouTube, but that's all gonna change by the end of this video. Today, what I'm gonna do is take my room that's been used as a YouTube recording video space and try and make it more of a home music recording space with the YouTube recording built in. It will make sense. I'm gonna show you around. It's messy and this is why I need to change it. I wanna show you the workflow here. It's absolutely terrible for actually recording music. It's been good for recording YouTube videos, but now that my focus is on recording music and YouTube videos, I need to change things up. So let's have a look and then I'll explain what I'm gonna do. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see a beautiful, sleek, tidied up space with a great workflow. I'm um, really, <laughs> I've got my thinking cap on, I need to think about how I'm gonna do this. But yeah, let's start by having a look around. Sort of came up with how this room was laid out. It was more about displaying my guitars on the wall, laying out my amps in a place where, you know, they could be in the backdrop of a video, having my pedal shelving here that's normally in the back of the video, and having my lighting. Lighting's a really important part for YouTube, which is why I've got this rig up on the ceiling. But this huge light dome takes up about half the space. You know, as I walk into the room, it's just huge. I'm constantly ducking and diving. So I'm not sure how much I can change about that because it's really great for the lighting. But the, here's the thing. This is my editing suite here. That's gonna stay in front of the window. The window provides the light for when I speak to camera. I'm facing the window at this chair and the camera's in the corner. Then here's my music recording suite. So there's a MacBook Pro and an Apollo 8XP and loads of cables that run out from there round the back of the corner, come out and then go towards microphones. And I used to have a bigger microphone setup, so there's loads of cables because I would do two amps and I'd have two room mics. At the moment I use one room mic, which is this AKG one, an SM57 and a Sontronics Delta II ribbon mic. There's, <laughs> here's the little champ that I'm actually making a video about at the moment. That'll be the next video after this one, so if you want to see that, then uh, you know, keep an eye out. But here's the problem. If I'm sitting here with my guitar in hand, the camera's normally on this tripod facing me, the recording studio is over there, the laptop will be open, and I'll have those headphones on so I can hear the track I've made. Um, I record the bass using this Aguilar little bass amp and this bass. Normally just sat in that chair, I haven't been recording my bass playing. But when it comes time to record the guitar, I have to <laughs> set up the pedals that I want, mic up an amp that I want, that's all fine. But then I have to turn on the, the camera, go over there, hit record, normally then this light is in the way of the laptop because it's got to face me so I can't actually see when the track's about to start <laughs> so um, what I'll end up doing is copying and pasting my backing track three or four times into the Logic uh, interface and then just recording it from the second time onwards because I'm sitting here I end up retuning my guitar at the last moment especially if it's a Les Paul and um, it's just chaotic it's not what I want it to be so the aim today is to move that stand with basically the music studio itself over to here so that I can hit record anytime I want. These guitars that are in this stand here will probably move over there. On top of that, I want my amps to all be available to use. And, um, and here's the thing I'm finding the difference between the idea of most of my videos over the last two and a half years have been hypothetically about playing out live and that's what I talk about. Oh, this amp will be great for playing live, this pedal, blah, blah, blah. My mind is more focused on recording at the moment so I'm more interested in how can I get the best recorded sound but more importantly the best recording workflow. The, the, the brain space you have for the creative side of it needs to sort of be protected and the technical side needs to be as small as possible I find. I want to be able to hit a button and be ready to go. So I want to set my bass amp and bass and my, my setup for rhythm guitar to all just be like direct in. So the Aguilar bass amp, the Tone Hammer 500 is direct in. 
I've got my Tone Master Super Reverb. I want that to be set up direct in so that when I have an idea for a bass and rhythm section, I can record the guitar and the bass super easy, off camera, make the backing track. You know, I'm not, unless I'm doing a video about how I make a backing track when I actually get really good at it, I don't want to, to, to really record that. So I think um, I'm going to sort of start tidying up, get the tidying done, and then I'll, I'll show you again how I'm going to move the amps and move the music studio. And that'll be in the middle of the video. And then we'll get to the end and it will all be polished. And then maybe I'll do a part two where I actually show you me recording a backing track. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Here's the gap in the middle there. And what I've noticed over time is where the Bartel amp is, is a much better place for recording than where the two rock is. Something about the reflections at the back, perhaps it doesn't sound great. And I've had a, even had a couple of people comment in the past, your two rock doesn't sound as good as I expect. I agree. So there's no point having the two rock there. The two rock is going to go under that guitar and therefore also be in the back of the videos more often. And when I want to use the two rock over the Bartel, I can swap them around. And that means the recording studio spaces, you know, the, the trolley will be in that gap. And then the super it's over there is going to sit where the two rock is as my rhythm amp plugged directly in round the back. So that will keep it neat and tidy. Um, I don't think there should be any amps behind there because I can never get them out. So I'm going to move that reissue Vibralux that I don't use very often. Um, and I need to think about what's worth putting on this space here. I borrowed this um, off a mate of mine, Stuart, at Sunbear Pickups. This is his Victory um, Sheriff 22, which I plan to make a video on at some point, but that's not mine. Um, I need to be able to get to the guitars and I might as well use this space. So I'm just trying to think. And by the way, these barrel shaped things, I've got one there, one there and one there. Those are bass traps. Without those in the room, actually, the bass was just overwhelming and they just did enough. I can't remember how much they cost. Maybe they were 150 quid each or something from Toman. But yeah, they, they really worked well. So I'm about to move that um, and then I can continue to clear this disgusting space. With the studio thing, it, it's back there, not set up yet. What's a real bummer is I had all these electrical plug, you know, sockets put in. Being a beginner, still, this is two and a half years ago I designed this room. At least I had sockets put everywhere. They're, you know, every six foot apart or less. Uh, you can't see very well under here. Let <laughs> me increase the ISO. So I have got them round, but if you were if you were designing from scratch, it's very difficult to know where the amps are going to sound best, especially without an expert who can design these things for you. Um, be ultra careful, put extra sockets in, because yes, I'm not going to be able to use these the way I, they were planned to, and I'll have to use some sort of extensions and extra sockets back here, but at least there are sockets back there that allow me to do this. Um, right, let's keep carrying on. I've got to clean up this area, give it a, a hoover and everything, and then a, my couple of big guitar racks, the five guitar rack, three guitar rack will be around this area so I'll see them from the desk when I'm working which is nice and then uh, all the amps are going to line up against that wall which I think is going to look really cool um, I'm not sure how much you'll see in the background of my videos but at least it gives me maybe a couple more angles to record in front of so you can a bit like Rick Beato with his amps all behind him we'll see how that works out but yeah there's the the two rock which I think once we have other stuff I used to have my bike up here. I don't have it there anymore. At some point I want to take that down and put one, two, three or four more guitar hangers. Uh, oh, by the way, I see a lot of forum posts, people asking what guitar hangers are good. And these are, these are the Hercules ones, but they're not with the wooden back. The wooden back one seems to be crap and people do get them breaking. So far, this metal only one seems really strong. But anyway, that was just a, a side note. Oh God. Why did I, why did I start this? I'm uh, slowly but surely I've been getting cables up and just moving stuff around. I'm also trying to clean as I go. The, uh, this building is on the, quite a main road. So we get loads of dust. Plus we had a year and a half of building works in the house after this room was made. So it just got packed full of dust. I clean it all the time and it resettles. So that's dust for you. Oh, I just can't wait to play.
later today hopefully but yeah it's uh it's starting to take shape it's that middle bit it's that worst chaos in about half an hour or an hour i might be able to show you a lot of progress so i'm gonna keep going i definitely love untangling cables it's probably my favorite part of doing music so yeah oh look at that how much fun is that it's also quite timely i'm just watching or listening to this video about the Blackstar Amped One, whilst we're talking about direct ins and various ways of recording. I don't think I'm going to need something like this with my Super Reverb and also with the direct outs from my Fry at Power Station. So we're going to try those first before we go down any other route of direct. There's no point in buying something if I don't need it. Um, but yeah, we can talk more about that later. So I've made quite a lot of progress. This is never going to be the studio that I had in my head. I just probably have too many guitars and amps and not enough space to make it really beautiful. You know, if it was a commercial space, I'd have to do something completely different. And on top of that, I'm always looking for ways to make my work better. Work meaning, you know, the videography, the lighting, the actual musical playing, the recording of that, the recording of everything. And although I feel like I have progressed a lot over the last year or two, I'm just nowhere near where I want to be. Like this video, for example, I was just editing and it doesn't look as cool as I wanted or sleek. I never get the lighting the way I want. I'm probably better at pumping out videos quickly than I am at taking a long time to make one great video. But I feel like if I want the channel to, to grow more quickly, maybe I need to slow down. Um, yeah, just to be open and honest, I'm someone that works well in short bursts. So I'll have a lot of energy for say three weeks, pump out loads of stuff. I'm not just doing this, I've got other work I'm doing and exercise and cooking and you know, I'm really creative, energetic and then I really have a slump for a week or two, feel a bit burnt out. Um, that's often when I take some time, maybe just do guitar practice and things. Um, but maybe I should experiment with trying to take two weeks to make one video so that it's like an absolute cracker of a video and make it about a topic that's going to get lots of views <laughs> you know I love doing this channel and I do it whether I've got a thousand views per video or ten thousand or more and on average I get a couple of thousand views which is great I, I love the viewership I've got um sorry for this diversion if you're new to the channel but it's you know I've been going at this a long time and it growth is slow I notice other people growing more quickly than me and I wonder what the element of the difference is it's probably just because I'm I just bring more of my own issues into the channel as opposed to just say if I was a demoist, just recording the demo, talking about the pedal, move on, do another video in two days. My whole channel is a journey of me, my playing, my recording, everything. So I think that's probably why it's slower because it's more of a personal thing. Maybe, who knows? Maybe you could give me some ide ideas down in the comments. I also don't enjoy doing um, content about stuff I don't care about. I've been offered guitars and other things from from some companies and uh, just thought that's not me I don't need I don't want to do that you know obviously if Gibson or Fender offered me a guitar I would want to do that so I would do it passionately uh, but I need that passion anyway the space although it doesn't look beautiful it's it's now a really much more usable space so I'll just show you around quickly and uh, maybe we'll hear a bit of that super reverb plugged in for the first time all right, so it's taken me a couple of hours or more and I'm basically done for now. So I thought I'd show you around and we'll see basically what the workflow in this studio is gonna be like.
So my camera goes on the tripod over here and I'll be sitting here. This is how I film my videos. And it's normally sort of like this. I'm planning to get a couple of interesting lights in the background now, some sort of RGB, you know, something just to give it a glow. That'd be more interesting. But in terms of the recording, this is so much better for me now. I'll be sat here. You won't actually see this sort of uglier element of it, but now I can have my logic up here, sat here. So this is the base amp, the Aguilar. This is plugged into the back of the Apollo and it's also got a direct line to a tuner, which I keep here. So I can tune the bass, plug direct in. It's super easy for me. And um, this little bass amp, I got it at half price, second hand. So it was about 400 quid, I think, uh, which is great. And then this is the thing that's gonna make my life easier as well, is having this Tone Master Super Reverb here. I've never actually tried <laughs> the direct out. So this is a bit of a gamble. The other options I would have had would be to use either my Iron Man 2 or my Fryet as uh, ways to, to direct out these amps. For now, I'm going to try the Fender, give it a go. And what I've done is I want to do the rhythm from here, basically. And in a minute, I'll just show you what it sounds like. So I've put in a, a few pedals that are going to make, hopefully give it a cool rhythm tone, but we can, we can experiment with these. So there's a compressor, an EQ, and sort of Dumble style, um, you know, high head room and inverted commas sort of pedal. And those then go into the, the super reverb. And why don't we see what that sounds like? Okay, so it's not the shiniest, spangliest, tidiest space. It's not super glamorous. I don't have a huge, beautiful console or lots of things really, but I don't need that. All I need for my simple thing is my headphones, a guitar, a way to record direct in when I need, a bass amp to get some bass down, my laptop there so I can just hit record when I need to, and then all my amps and my microphones for the cool stuff that I want to play, <laughs> well, I hope. And that's it, and that's what I did today, was get from a complete mess of a space that was making me, it was a real faff, let's say, to get things recorded, to a point where I can walk in have an idea, lay it down, that's it. Who cares what it, what else? Who cares what it looks like? So yeah, I'm pretty happy now actually. Let's just go over and hear that Super Reverb plugged in. Um, I might make a more in-depth video at some point, but just so you can see how this is gonna work for me. All right, this is just the guitar direct through the amp, no pedals yet. So I'd say the tone from that Super Reverb plug direct uh, into the um, recording stuff is, it's okay, it's good. Sort of not mind blowing when you're used to listening to loud amps in the room, but I think it's something I just have to shift my perspective on. And if anything, um, at least for now, for the next year or so, as I sort of polish my recording skills and get better at actually laying down tracks, which is a whole other video in itself, um, the very the specific nuance of the sound is probably way less important than just doing it several times or you know making 10 or 15 tracks over the next year would be fantastic 
practicing my rhythm skills, practicing being in time, and just building a suitable tone using a few pedals to stick with that amp for now whilst I do that. And then if I ever want to record the tracks to release them to something like Epidemic Sound, which is where I would get music to put in my YouTube videos. You know, you can post music up on there and people download it and you get some cut somehow, I'm not sure. Um, then I could re-record things using uh, live amps or whatever. But I think for the rhythm part of it, it'll be absolutely fine. For the bass, absolutely great. I've just started building a parts caster. The body and the neck have gone to the, the finisher. Uh, this is a parts caster bass. It's a precision jazz bass that I'm gonna have made. It's gonna be really sweet. Much cheaper than buying a custom shop one, but with Sunbear bass pickups in, with a Fender licensed neck from all parts. Yep. For, with a body from a guitar build, and then you know, the hardware, I think it will be really great to have um, alongside my precision bass. They've got different size necks. That's a, bass is a whole other thing. I should make a video, you know, bass playing for guitarists or something, just with some simple stuff that I've learned so far. Anyway, that is my new studio. It's the way it's gonna be laid out. I'm really excited to get on now just with making more videos. I'm in the middle of making the one about the five watt tweed champ, which um, is basically about how or whether that champ is good enough for recording or not. Um, but you can find out more about that in that video. And um, if you haven't already and you, um, you want to enter my prize giveaway, I'm giving away this white protein pedal uh, anywhere in the world. You just have to subscribe and comment. And when I hit seven and a half thousand subs, I will send this, well, I'll pick a name out of a hat and send it wherever the winner is. Great pedal. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.